No shrieks. <laughs> That's very kind of you. You gotta get to that one. Right, that's where we got to, wasn't it? Yeah. Right, I'm potting these up, obviously from there. So, Lynn, this covers yours again from earlier on. So, all these will get buried up to their stems, meaning that cup is the same as them. So, he will be buried. So, there's only a bit of compost in the bottom. So, when I do, as we can see there, I've made me hole, there's a bit in the bottom, taking the cup out. And you'll see he's ready to go out. He's telling you, plant me on. So when you put him on, uh, don't forget the, these are my uh, first seed leaf. Don't matter about if, if you're knacking them up. But uh, I try to hold them up, keeping that um, plant upright as I earth them up there. And then firm him in upright. Busting. So you start off with a cup, bit in the bottom, then you cup it. Then I use a label to plug it around the side of that, then get your cup out. I mentioned before, it don't matter if you take a seed leaf off. Then I put them outside again for watering, for ease. Give them a good soaking until they start coming out of the bottom. Right, car windscreen, I've got an NVS sticker, not in that anymore, so we can uh, clear that off. They crapped on me, don't need them. Nick, can you come at the end? We get too much uh, crap, and I, I don't want to make another cock up. Getting quite a bit of a uh, really stuff now: uh, worm compost, rock dust, and the spent mushroom compost. Now people uh, started to come down the allotment trading sheds. Now the weather's getting a bit better. Until today, we've had everything today: snow, hail, sunshine, the bloody lot. This was during the week. I'm still getting some de decent frost, as you can see there. So this is about uh, half eight in the morning. So the sun comes up here, so he's uh, cleared that lot. Mm -hmm. I think it's halfway through work next week. We're getting the um, decent weather, or getting rid of the cold nights, hopefully. So when it is nice and sunny, <coughs> and there's no wind, everything is opened up. And this is the first time during the week we've, uh, we've seen people about mingling. Makes a hell of a difference when you're going out. And uh, if there's a nice bit of colour, spring is telling you boss blossom should equal fruit. I had these spare, so uh, Paul had these off us. Dropped them off to him. Right, these are me different, these are from me blanch leaks, the collars for the blanch leaks. I've got different sizes working up this is builders damn course <coughs> get it for it well um i think i had mine from b and q the last last roll but it is uh quite strong nice thick so these are 10 and 13 inches here so i'm using the 10 inch third first and then uh, once i need to extend that which will be obviously 13 inches so that'll be up there all I'm doing is covering more of that leak, <coughs> so the middle makes it grow up to give it a light, because I want the length in it. So there the collars have come off, the old collars, and you see I've got a, the leaves are called flags, well flags or leaves, so I've got an old leaf there, which needs to come off, so I've took him off. Uh, I might take that one off as well. All I want is these lot to be the same height and thickness or as near as you can do it and that's when I've cleaned all the old uh, leaves off. Nice and straight because they've got a cane up them. I'll get these canes and the rings are helping them to keep upright as well because you're keeping that centre upright and the leaves and once the collars go around as well then that they should end up nice and straight. So there I was measuring <coughs> the, from the root plate to the veil, which is where the leaves meet, trying to get all these exactly the same. So there's nothing wrong with the, that one leaf round, except he was too short, so I took him off as well. 
to get them all the same. And there, we're done. <coughs> so them lot will get watered. Before that, we have to get a, a, extra canes on them because we've, we've got that extra length. So I'll get all my canes out and I'm picking the straightest ones out. Because the... They do warp over the years, although they are kept dry. So there's one collar going on. And uh, I'll put him at the side, right in the middle. I'll sh you, you see better later on. But the cane goes in the middle of it. Then we'll get a, a good waiter in. And don't forget the new canes are going in, so these hooks or clips go higher up so you're lifting that leak up so the the middle bit the new bit of the, the leaves in, inside looking for light so it makes him shoot up right that's how the, the leak looks now I want to help him out because all the leaves on this side are oh, there but they're all twisted mangled and whatever so if you help them out so there's the middle, middle of the leak. All the leaves this side, make sure they're nice in the shape they're supposed to be, facing the plant itself. And then just open them out and come around this end. And then do all the, exactly the same again that side. So there's none twisted and nothing. And there's a new leaf at the bottom. There's another one. It's just helping the, leaf, uh, the leak out. Also, you're helping that new one out. Because you can see uh, sunlight, daylight. And there we are, all done. Right, this spud was uh, potted up last week. It is potting up again. This is the last potting up. This one's for um, mate Caroline. I'm sorting her, some stuff out for her. This is my own compost. Bung some in there. This is a pot leak in my own compost again. Anybody recognise him there? What earth mortar? Tomato seedling, yeah. Nothing kills off tomato seedlings. Even if you hot compost, you will still get seedlings germinated from tomato seed. Nothing kills them off. Well, I don't matter, I'll just pull them out. There's another chap there. Right, these are my gladdies, my small gladioli corms. These have just started coming through. Although, now I've had a look this morning again. In fact, I've watered this lot because of the, the good weather we've getting. And I've given all these another watering. And these are about an inch and a half high now. Oh, yeah. Don't forget, these are in the coal end of the greenhouse on the bottom staging. And uh, greens are doing well. Right, time for the worm wheel again. You'll be getting him. And him. That's my cue. Four. Can you all see that? Basically. Not going around. Oh. Ian, he won a couple of weeks ago. You tried it some muck, boss. Right, second one. Paul, have you got your lucky slippers on? Not again. Ugh, Scott, oh. Uh, Oh, Thank you. Real. It's not spinning, Mick. We've done now. Have you? Right, can you see the next photo? Yeah. Good. This is um something I put on during the week. I mean mate there, Lucy Senna. Angalong Bosa, meaning you great sir, you're great sir. Mm. Uh, that's right, I am. A mate from the Philippines. We've been following each other for moons. 
but as a composter. Colin, this is a start of yours, isn't it? No. That's, That's not my muck, eh? Jeffrey. Jeffrey, is that your muck? Not my personal muck, but yeah. <laughs> You've got the trots on you, mate. Good dollop. Colin, that's your one. That's me, yeah. Yeah. Right. right, thank you, Colin. All yours, sir. Right, fuchsias. Um, I'm not an expert on fuchsias. I've, I've come <coughs> throwing fuchsias from veg, thinking that I'd try and um, get something easier and eat uh, less less strenuous but growing fuchsias is just as difficult as growing exhibition veg. Um, whoever you speak to in the fuchsia world they've all got their own different methods of, of various uh, um, practices that they swear by. Um, my advice after trying to do it for a couple of years is do it your own way and see what works for you what works for you might not work for your mate next door but the secret is to keep trying and eventually you'll find a method that is successful and then you carry on that's the start that's the other side to me future green has um i'm going to show you how to take cuttings in a bit um I don't grow as many as that normally, but I've got a few for my mate down the road. He's, he's not very well, so I'm looking after them for him. Um, that's just a general view. There's my heater in the background. I don't, I don't leave that pot fuchsia on the heater when it's lit. It's just there to give me a bit of room. Um, right, that's, that's a fuchsia um, Paul and Jane in these potting up. Um, there is a cutting that was taken um, sometime in January, I think, um, and you'll see the root system now ready to be potted up on the next one, Mick. There's a nice root system formed, so it's going to be potted up now into the next size pot. Don't put up into too large a pot, just, just half inch round. Put a little bit of uh, compost and vermiculite in the bottom, and then you'll you'll um, uh, fits nicely. Just just ease the compost round um, until it's settled nicely. Uh, right, this is the cutting you know. Um, what I do for my cuttings is I take that's a small tray. You'll see I fill with ordinary uh, multi-purpose compost. So I'll fill that um, and tip it out. Next one, Mick. There's it's tipped out. And then I'll fill the same uh, container with vermiculite and give it a, a good mix. So that's a 50-50 ratio for cuttings. Um, fill the uh, container up uh, with that compost. And then we'll see... Um, I'll get the fuchsia next one, Mick. Right, this is this is a uh, a pot of fuchsia cuttings, and I I I took the cuttings and then planted the cuttings up on the 16th of the third. Uh, this is what we call a multi pot. I think there's probably seven or eight um, uh, plants in there, all the same variety. Um, but they now need pinching out. And what I'm going to do here is, is actually, when I pinch it out, I should, be, I should be propagating the cuttings. So there you can see the one cutting that I'm going to take. Um, I should take it just below the leaf node. You'll see in, on the next picture where I get my scissors there. I'm just snipping that cutting off. And there, there's the first cutting. Um, and there, I think, on that pot, I've got one, two, three, four. I think there's seven or eight cuttings there that I've taken. So that multi-pot now will be put to one side. And where I've taken the cutting, it will produce two extra shoots. So I've virtually multiplied the shoots on that particular pot. 
and I, I might I might stop it once again in in sort of four or five weeks and then let it flower. So you'll get a nice a nice bunch of flowers. Um, what we do with the cutting? There's my first cutting. Nice and healthy. Um, I'll show you what we do. Take the two bottom leaves off and just trim below the node there. Um, that's it, ready. And then what I tend to do if the leaves are big on the next one, I'll just trim the leaves. You'll see there, I've just, just halved the leaves. Then put it into the compost there. And there's uh, there's my seven cuttings, and I did that. I took those on the fifth of the fourth. Um, next one I'll show you. I'll give you. A so you're one. planting right up to the leaf. Yes, yes. Just yeah. put, plunge them down. I'd make a little hole with the dibber and just put them right down to the leaf. Yeah. It's exactly um, the same again, isn't it? The, the roots will come from that stem. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's just. Nature in it, yeah. Yeah. Do you not dip them in any hormone? No, no. Fuchsias this time of the year don't need it. They, they will. If um, I've found out that this particular time of year, if you take a nice healthy cutting, um, what I did say, what I should have told you is, if you're going to take cuttings of a fuchsia plant, water it the day before, so that your cuttings are nice and turgid when you take them. Mm. Um, uh, and then, um, well, this is what I've found, and, and then I'll put them in this compost, give them a good watering. I haven't watered the compost previously. Uh, the cutting went into dry compost, and I'll give them a good soak there, um, and it's good drainage compost, so I've probably done that two or three times over a period of, of, of sort of 15, 20 minutes. Um, then put it in a tray, put a little propagator on, put it on the bottom bench, on the bottom shelf of the bench, in a warm uh, but not sunny position. You don't want to cook them, nice shady position, and there they are snug under, under on the bottom bench, out of the way. And there's one or two more that I've um, I've got going as well. Um, the ones on the left in those trays, I haven't got, I haven't got lids on even, um, but they will take, or well, uh, majority of them will take. Um, I think the next shot, uh, the next shot, here's a tray that I've done previously of a variety called Shatsi. Uh, I took these cuttings on the 25th of the second, using the same method that I've just described. Uh, and they're ready. Um, this was this picture was taken previously, so you will see the root structure that the cuttings have formed. Right. So there they are. They're all ready for teasing out now and potting on. Nice root structure there. All that is 50% uh, multi-purpose compost with vermiculite. Uh, and watering in, um, and that's and away they've gone. Um, there's another one. So what I do with those, I think I potted these up into um, into two inch pots. Might have been two and a half inch pots. There we are, two, four, six, there's eight there. So they they'll be growing away nicely now. Um, and there's there's another. Well, that's my other greenhouse ready for my basket plant. Uh, so, there we go. But that's, uh, yeah. Uh, and that's, that's the other side of the bigger greenhouse. Got some dahlias on the go there. But essentially, that's, um, that's the way I propagate my fuchsias. And I find that I'm, I'm, I'm having more success with that method that I've developed myself than uh, listening to people's advice doing their method. It's a method of, um, of formulating myself and I find it works for me. Um, so if you want to try it, let me know how you get on. Brilliant, thanks, Paul. Uh,
Jeffrey, you got a question? Go on, mate. Yeah, uh, just like to ask Colin, can you recommend any fur hanging baskets that really droop over them? Oh, well, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I've got a list of hanging basket varieties here. Um, hang on. Uh, basket varieties, there's, well, there's hundreds Alison, Ruth, Griffin, Claudia, Cascade. Dusky rose. What you need, what you need to do is to get onto. Putts Folly is a good one. I've grown that. It's a beautiful, creamy white, uh, and if it's grown properly, you get a, an absolute ball of flowers. Um, Can you put but, a few suggestions on an email to me or a Facebook to me? Yes, yes, certainly I will, mate. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Have you got a fuchsia supplier? Uh, a fuchsia nursery close? Uh, yeah. Not close, but there are a few in Belgium, so I can get them to do it. Uh, do, do my order, do they? Yeah. All right, mate. Yeah, I'll, be, I'll do that. I'll be in touch. Thank you. Um, you got another photo coming up, Mick? Uh, and me, Colin, please. Okay. I'll put it on. That's uh, that's just that's my big greenhouse where I'm running out of room. I'm I'm getting all my basket plants ready, um, and that's I can hardly walk in there. It's it's getting ridiculous. I keep saying I'm going to not do baskets anymore, but when you tell somebody that you're not going to do them, they take offence. And <laughs> so I say, oh, well, go on, I'll do do them this year. Next one, Mick. Uh, that's a multi-pot. That's what I've done there. Is is another variety. That's all ready for stopping. I should stop that and pot it up. And uh, I can't see the variety on that. But they were taken on the um, second and the third as well. Uh, right. There's my local muck heap. Nice black stuff. Unfortunately, I have to bag it up. It's a bit hard work. I normally have about eight or nine bags in the boot of the car at a time. Oh, I could do with a young lad to do that for me. Yeah. Um, next one, mate. And the next. That's just the indication of the variation of temperature. Um, there's my front border with my shallots in. That's standing up, desperate for water now. Yeah. Really are, although we've had a drop the last couple of days. But yeah. that, that new watering again. And here you are, three three for the price of one. This was um a bamboo that we made you me last year. And I I put it in this this is a thirty litre tub. Um and it's uh I can't remember the variety, but it says it's non invasive. But I've decided to keep them in tubs. Um but it was beginning to, the the, uh, uh, the tub was beginning to sort of distort, so I thought, oh, I'll get that out. Um, so I, I took the spade to it, and uh, I split it up into three. And I got three for the price of one there, so, and, uh, so that was, that was bloody hard work doing that, because those roots, I tell you, you I had to get a spade and a fork and a, a saw and, um, so what I did after that, I said, bugger it, I'll have a sit down. Um, the next one, Mick. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Good, man. That's it. Cheers, Good, cheers Colin. Colin. Excellent. Right, Thanks, well, Colin. while we're Colin. on the subject, there's a couple mm -hmm. got their hands up. David? Colin, I just wondered what you do with them in the winter, because I don't seem to have kept any of my fuchsias this winter do you have a heated greenhouse for them i do yes i'll keep i'll keep the um um uh, if you can perhaps keep hardy fuchsias um uh, mm. if you if you sort of really cover them up well but I, i'll keep my greenhouse at sort of four no lower than four or five degrees throughout the winter okay i'll try that next year yeah. <laughs> thank <Yeah>. you <laughs> Andy? No, no, just uh, want to say thank you to Colin. Really. I mean, we asked for the uh, little cuttings presentation this week. Claire's had a few comms with 
sort of call and join oh. the week about our little thing. So j just to say thank you, really, that's all. All right, man. Cheers. You're welcome. Nigel, got your hand up. Quick in, Colin. Is, yeah. um, I noticed when you did the cuttings, you watered them from the top. Do you always water from the top or do you ever bottom water with the cuttings? On, a, on an established pot, I, I, I like to sprinkle sprinkle the water over the cutting just to soak the compost down around where the where the cutting will form. But when I've got a, uh, um, a, a, a pot that's established, I will water from the bottom. I've got a tap litter tray and just leave the pots in. And um, I found a secret with watering fuchsias is is less is good the easiest way to kill a fuchsia is to over water and one, so one the, other question colin is what about pinching out well yes you uh, you pinch out to form and shape your fuchsia every um when when your fuchsia is growing depending on the variety some people let them grow three leaves and then pinch out some people let them grow two sets of leaves and then take the growing tip out and when you take the growing tip out you will get two more branches forming you see do you then, pop the growing tip on sorry do you pop the growing tip on you can do yeah that, 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 people say they are the best cuttings the tips of the tip, the growing tips of cuttings are the best uh, best to take uh, there was one chap, he, he takes minute little cuttings, you can hardly pick them up with your fingers, two tiny little leaves and uh, just a stalk where he's pinched the head uh, and he roots those as well. But I, I, uh, I like to take bigger cuttings. So. Thank you, Colin. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Nick? Unmute yourself, Nick. Good man. Sorry, I've got the microphone on. Um, I, I noticed when you're taking your cuttings, uh, Colin, that you, uh, you uh, the, the bottom leaves, you, you, you cut the leaves in half. Uh, any reason why you do that? Just, 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 um, uh, what's it called? Um, huh? uh, transpiration. Transpiration, yes. It's just to prevent the transpiration because the future cutting is taking up water and then it's transpiring out of the leaves. So it, the theory is that if you halve the area of the leaves, it will lose less water, and, oh, therefore, okay. and therefore give give the cutting the moisture that it wants to promote its. In, that's, that's interesting because I've seen people uh, do it with chilies before uh, when they're yeah. planting, taking cuttings. Um, oh, that's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. I think it's less stress on the plant, isn't it? It ain't gonna work so hard. Yeah. You're just helping it out. Yeah. Any more? No, Julia, I've still got your hand up. Have you got to take your hand off or do you want to piddle? Took it off. Anybody else <laughs> got a question for Colin before we move on? Yeah, Colin, do you have um, any problem with future gold mine? Oh, no. Touch wood. I'm touching Ooh. everything now. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, at, not at the moment, mate. I'm... I'm um... Uh, what can I say? I, I've been very fortunate. I don't think it's come up as far as the Midlands. It's oh. it's, it's generally down in the south that it's a yeah. big problem. Yeah, uh, we've got few of our fuchsias have got it, and yeah, we've 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 cut them right down to the ground, and they've seemed to be better the following year, but it, they still got it a bit, you know. Yeah, but there's no, uh, as far as I'm aware, um, there's no cure, is there? No, no, it's, no. Yeah. Yeah. Can just I just add to that? I was told I, I um, was told by an expert that when you get fuchsia gold mite, you have to burn it because it spreads really quickly and easily. Yeah. So if you, if there's anybody that lives near you that's got yeah. fuchsias, then it can sort of travel really easily yeah. through the air. So yeah. The, yeah. The, yeah. the advice yeah. is to burn it. Definitely burn it. Don't oh, put yeah. it in your green bin or your compost because it, it will. No. Well, like, the problem will be gone from you, but you just pass it on to other people. Yeah. Is this uh, airborne? Uh, I don't think anyone knows because. Is it, it a new disease? Is it hey? something new? 
No, it's yeah. been around it's... for a while. So it's just spreading? It's been around for a few years, but it's, uh, there's no, no treatment. You can take them all out. It's just, uh, it just destroys your fuses. Yeah. Um, uh, no, no, but not all varieties. We've got two or three different varieties, and, and, it, and some are fine, but others have got it bad. Might, just... You might be unlucky that they might catch it eventually. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sadly. But on a final note, um, that glass of beer was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers for that, Colin. Good mate. Thank Thanks, you. Colin. Good man. Right, next one. <laughs> right, we've had him. This is um, heavy chili. Right, this was a uh, seventh of September. This kicked off. I was helping my mate out. He's in there, uh, there he is, Paul Davis. He's in our gardening club, and last year he grew a nice pepper, as you can see there, chilli pepper. And he thought he got a, a good weight on him. Mm. So uh, he looked into the looked into it all, and he thought, I've got the world record here. So he had to go to different uh, weighing scales, get it uh, verified three times, witnesses and all this crap. Then he brought it up to me, and um, we videoed it with me doing it on the scales as well, because I'm a National Veg Society judge. But they was almond and orange for bloody moons. This is uh, Guinness. That was a pain in the arrows. Anyway, finally come through during the week, and uh, he's, he's got it. Oh, boy. Heavy's chilli pepper weighed 460 grams. It was grown by Paul Davis, UK, Alzheimer's. Uh, 7th of September 2020. Brilliant. Shuffed a bit for him. How did he do it? Mm -hmm. Has he saved right any then. seed, Mick? Hey? Has he saved any seed? Yeah, I'm getting excited now, are you? <laughs> that was his son who was trying to get on earlier on. You know, we, 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 I lost everything. Jody wells me down the shed. Right. This is his uh, kitchen at the house. He ain't, he ain't got um, any lights, he don't use any lights or heat. The only heat he uses is in his propagator. But when they come out the propagator, there they are there. So you've got a bit of, I think they're fused um, on the top. But you've got sunlight coming in there. So, so he hasn't got a greenhouse, as you can see the stuff on the table there. So he doesn't pamper them or anything like this. And he's a uh, propagator early Jan. Uh, end of April and May, they go into a cold greenhouse. And what he started using last year was this stuff. I don't know if you heard about it. We've got to go and uh, have a sesh. I think these people, I'm from Nottingham, from a hydroponic place, and they're coming down. And I'm going down. We're going to have a, a few Q and A's with them, and uh, because they, they when he rang them up, and said oh, I've used this stuff because he does a trial and error as well, exactly the same as I do. If I'm trialing some, so I'm trialing on in there. These two, I will not trial it on. I'd use the normal stuff what I'm doing. That's how you do a trial. So the one he did try it on. That's it. That's the one that went bloody haywire, and that's what he got his world record on. And basically, it's, it's for the bloom, or as soon as you get that flower on, like it's the chrysanthemum grows, and people like this for the blooms. So he thought about it. If you go to the next, and look at these, I'm only in small pots, not even standing upright. You don't look after them like I do, which is good in the sense. Gotta be cruel to be kind. That plant will be stronger than mine. So I'm learning as well. And I'm zooming on that one. The application rate, don't forget this is a concentrate. Most of them now are concentrates. And you only need 0.25 of a mil for the first two weeks. Then 0.5 of a mil, meaning it's gonna last your bloody moon. And it's twelve ninety five, which ain't a bad price for a two fifty mil, but I think it's about seven quid postage. But I found out since you can get this off uh, Amazon. 
with a uh, free postage, whatever. But uh, they're coming down Thursday. And we're going to have a good natter with them because they have told him if you'd have used our other products as well as this, it'd have been twice as big. And I've asked them about folio fees. As you know, I like my folio fees. So uh, we should get an update next week. But uh, chuffed a bit for him. Good man. Mate? Yes. That that last photograph of the bottle, you just got back one. That one? You see, yeah. Eva, Eva Ponic, PK bulk. But yeah. Uh, no, no. Up, up to the top title. You see, yep. see the MPK there, Nought eighteen twenty. Yep. That tells you for flowers, doesn't it? The last one. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh. But he said that that's what did it for him. As soon as that that flower opens and you drop that holy feed, that that's what it's all about. I'll try that in my baskets. Oh, I thought you were going to stay in the bath then. <laughs> what you're getting excited? Well, that as well, if it works there. <laughs> right, next one. Um, Caslon Primary School Gardening Club. This is where I'm filling my space up with this year. Uh, the missus worked up the school, obviously, uh, <coughs> started off as a, well, it ended up as an adult link worker, but it started off in the nursery when our kids started there, two lads. I've been involved ever, ever since. I, I either, um, they wanted a football, well, they got a football team, but they, they didn't want to cop. So I, I took over and uh, within 12 months, we'd won the small schools league. Then I did the PTA, the chair of the PTFA, and the second year we took uh, I think it was fifteen hundred on the face, which had never been done before. Basically, if you put your mind to do it, you have to do it. So I've always been involved with the school. Uh, a couple of kids wanted uh, interested in gardening, so I used to drag them down to uh, my allotment, which is where this photo is. Abbey Road allotments. Every time they come down for a nose, I've always got to take some home with them. Hmm. And uh, basically, I think there was uh, the door class. There was three uh, uh, classes, uh, four classes, uh, year seven and eight. And basically, the kids uh, in each class had one raised bed, and they could grow anything they wanted to grow. It's no good growing some of the nothing to eat or like or whatever. Health and safety, PC brigade, stop the kids coming down. So I asked the head, I got loads of ground, I said it's going to do a full allotment on the school ground. The head weren't going to say no, obviously it's good uh, publicity for him. So I got um, five grand uh, lottery money, our in the area committee. Where's this crap, make sure I get it out. Um, each council has a quarterly grant from the government to help local projects. There's quite a few groups or people uh, in the local communities. I've no idea about this. I didn't until I looked into it after money. And they have to, if they don't use the money, they they lose it. And uh, quite a few of the groups who are having hours, I mean, they get told about it. So good luck to them. But it's usually the foreign groups, Yemenis and all this crap. They, they have uh, all the money they can get because they're told about it we aren't which is a pain in the iris but uh, anyway i got the full five grand off them and as you can see there there's a raised bed meaning that's where the tunnel's going to go over the raised bed so that's the first thing i did and i filled that up that was the shed they got on the school grounds itself and the original shed and eventually I started working my way up with raised beds down the bottom and raised beds here. This was the fruit trees, working my way up. Somebody's whispering, all you've got to do is mute yourself. Very kind of you. So my tunnels over the raised bed, fruit trees are in, and this is slabbed, obviously, for 
there's somewhere going to go on it. There's a lean to and then a shed. This was their original sh uh, shed, but because of the vandalism, you got the door kicked in and all this crap. But I just took the door off and I'm still going to use that. And uh, what I trialed in there was a haystack. We was growing stuff just in the haystack, and that worked as well for the kids. That was a dollop off my rhubarb. I bought that down. Pop a black country brew. Pathway, obviously, in case it starts piddling down. When he first started off, it was me, Paula, and Sue. They did the the gardening club, but uh, they loved it. When we had the biggest the uh, waiting list for the out, out, uh, outside of the school uh, hours, because not being on the national curriculum, you couldn't do it during school hours. The weather's whispering. Can you mute yourself, please? Gordon should have come on the national curriculum uh, about, I don't know, eight years ago, along with cooking. Cooking started at Caslon Primary School, lasted six months, health and safety stopped it. Gardening only took place because I did it voluntarily. So we walk in, we got coming up to the tunnel. This is the my fruit trees. And there's another few oh. nice beds here. That was for the runners. Uh, the kids have got their own compost heap. And there's a wormery. Compost bins here. Then a wormery. Where to put, obviously. Because we've got no tap down there, we've got to catch all the rain with it. Uh, working my way up again. The rhubarb. You've had a good dollop of muck on it then, you can see how well it's done there. Because the kids was that hyper, I couldn't cope with them. So I had to um, send them collecting molehills. There's the allotment at the back. By the time they come back, after about three buckets each, they was knackered, I could cope with them then. To cause sellotape into trees anymore, kids. Health and safety, some rubbish, I don't know. This was their bug house. Obviously, there's the bugs, but uh, the little chaps that was in here as well, eventually, once they started looking into it, they loved it. Uh, first influx of kids, which are these lot here, obviously these at the back, they've been in the garden club for a, a while. These are the new ones who have come in first day. What I do, I go down to Tesco or Summit and I, get a, I buy a sweet pepper, which is there. And anything else, well, you get loads of things because it's, it's all, if it's out of season, then it's foreign, but it don't matter. But I buy all fruit and veg that you can take a bite out of. And then I bite a chunk out of the sweet pepper, eat it, obviously, and then pass it round. I say, if you don't like it, spit it out. If you do like it, I'll tell your mother when it comes. And there's half of them, they ain't even touched or heard of half the stuff I put in. And some of the kids, as soon as the parents come, I says, your little and like sweet peppers. No, he doesn't. He's never had one. I says, no, because you've never bought one. I said, he likes sweet peppers. Because we've lost two generations of gardeners by not having garden on the school's national curriculum. And uh, we're going to come unstuck with gardening clubs folding because there's nobody to take the place of the committee when the old ones finish off. Sorry, that was Nick, Sue. Can I just say, I can, all I can hear is somebody whispering in the background. Somebody's whispering in the background and it's annoying. It's very annoying. <laughs> Who's whispering in the background? They also have a dog. It just barked. Is it worth just muting everybody? All, all they've got to do is mute. I oh, know. Mute everybody, Mick. Mute yeah, everybody. mute everyone, Mick's yeah. the best thing. I can't see me mute thing from here. I looked for that before. How much now is that, that doing it? It's a microphone on the left. Nick. That's that's just that. I yeah. can't be listening no. if they're whispering and they can't hear us. Rather annoying. Right, anyway, mm. this is in the classroom. If it's piddling down outside, then we still work in the classroom. But it is doing. I get him to draw, draw a, a flower, the best flower they like, or whatever, um, veg and fruit. And we just, uh, and then I go through a bit of a seed sign or whatever. But if it's, if it's nice, which it is, if it's piddling down, then we go in the tunnel. 
But if it is nice, we've got old tables. Obviously, these are other classrooms, and we can work. So this outside is our classroom. And you can see the stuff here, drinking cups again, see trade. But uh, Tuesday afternoon, uh, 10 past 3 to about quarter past 4. 50 pence a kid, which is cheap as hell. Because all the parents, if they've got a little horror, or Mickle will babysit for that hour and a quarter. It's only 50 pence. So I used to get some right ragworts. But all I used to do was get the, the roughest or the cheapest one there. And threaten them. They get they get a warning and then they get thrown out. I did it with one and then the rest clicked on so that I knew what I was uh, what I said I was gonna do. But I'd get the roughest one and I'd show them what to do. I said, right, I'm gonna show these off how to do it. You will show that off how to do it. And it's and the, it's surprising how much they ease down. Because you're giving you something to do, you're getting involved. Probably first time ever in his life, but uh, they love it. Me? Yes. Is a chap called Robert Guest not muted, or there's only there's only three people not muted. One's Robert Guest, one's Steve, one's myself. Very rarely, once a month. I don't know. I don't know. I am seeing that. I'm moving. I'm muted. Go. Hey. I was muted. I am, but I'm, I'm keeping quiet. But but Robert Guest is unmuted. The one that keeps coming up and lighting up is the one with Steve, just Steve in the corner. So that's where the sound's coming from, I think. What the whispering? Yeah. Listen, listen. Steve's muted on my screen. That's the you one. Know, that I don't know how to mute him from here. Is Robert Guest listening? Robert? Dunno. Well, any road up this Anyway, we we finished the um, making it and all this crap. We've been running a couple of weeks, so it was our open day. This is Sylvia Eel at the time she was deputy house speaker of the House House of Commons. Only live local, so I got her to open the event up for us. And uh, which is a pain in the Aris. Because it was gobbing off for about half an hour, so I went round the back did some weeding. But I don't bother with them anymore. And uh, I bribe them again, threaten them, just say, right, it's a nice sunny day, do as you're told, work hard, and at the end we'll have a water fight. And they love it. But I cheat, I've got a waiting can, they've only got a little waiting bottle. And they go on like drowned rats. I don't know if you could do it nowadays, you'll, you'll get away with it. But they love it. Vandalism, I've had to put it up with, um, I think seven years I was doing it. And I, I think we had um, six ed teachers while I was there. Everyone, all I asked them for was one security light with a sensor on. Meaning if anybody did come in, the light would come on and hopefully that sod off. And uh, not one head helped me out. So we used to get vandalised regular basis. Obviously, kids have just, um, well, not just, but recently jobbed all this lot. And that's the damage they do. They just, uh, I did catch two on camera. Eventually, I put me on camera, looked me out back camera. But uh, I couldn't job them, I couldn't get the faces on. Yeah. And that's just uh, sealing up every time. I just seal up with a uh, horticultural plastic. But the kids love it, and they learn as well. There's three that this. I mean, all these now are, are, uh, are not adults, and there's three of them. In fact, one of them come down the trading shed Saturday. He's got his own allotment. And there's three I've seen now, and they're getting their kids into God because of what they had at school. Uh, all my spare stuff obviously come down here and these were rims off the large uh, pots and basically we plant through there and then just water around the plant and that rim holds the water inside and that was Anna who uh, helped me out at the end 
If you notice again, as soon as some are planted out, you then top, top dress it with straw. And the, there was loads of stuff that was getting off it. Kids loved it. We needed some muck from up the Caslon. Obviously, I can't get it dropped up the school. So I dragged the kids out. And it's only up here. There's no roads to cross, nothing. So he's down the footpath. I ain't supposed to bring him down because I'm supposed to wear eye vision jackets, helmets, goggles, bloody flippers, gloves. But we just nicked some uh, muck and legged it back up again. Moors down there, the lads, about three nuggets each, but uh, had to stay on your spot. And we just threw it at each other. Fancy wearing a white shirt. You were wearing it again. Fancy her wearing a white coat. A day next week. Well, they love it. If they do as they're told. Even during, because of the school holidays, which is a pain in the Paris. Obviously, if I'm uh, Got some growing. So I got a couple of volunteers just to do the water and women help out. Because the kitchen staff were still working, I bribed them in there and they used to do us our dinners, which was good on them. And there's another lot, have another dollop of dinner. And because we had got a good dollop of rhubarb, there's the head chef, head cook. I get her a load of rhubarb and her did us a rhubarb combo. And we got it, we got it in the paper, we did us a pie and all. So that was a good publicity for the kids. Little horrors. I've never had a kid that said rhubarb dipped in sugar. I can remember going to my grandfather's and uh, that's what that's what they've done when they were kids. This is because the parents ain't had gardening. Well, they've got to take some of them. Well, they love it. Uh, obviously, because it's open, the fields, you've got to net everything with the pigeons. <coughs> the other schools that has taken interest because I was putting it on um, Facebook, my, my group, everything I was doing that week, there was other schools following me, trying to copy or see what I was doing. And uh, there's quite a few schools doing it because I was getting the interest. Then I had somebody moan I shouldn't put the kids' photo on uh, on Facebook. So I took this and I said, This is for her that gobbled up last week. I says, oh, I saved. I've had permission off the head, which clears the school. I've had permission off the parents, which clears the kids. Well, they loved it. Molly has grown up now. Birthday, so I made her a cake out of our, our smoke and put a candle in. As you can tell, I was a health and safety officer. Right, because there was growing some good stuff, I thought, let's get them exhibiting. Let's use it all. Because the, the school harvest festival, best it's ever been, obviously. And this was the one before I left, the year before I finished. So this is the stuff that they grew in the in the on their allotment. So I thought, right, let's get them exhibiting. And this was the first one. I have to put me. Light on. This is the organic garden centre down uh, Coventry. Uh, Prince Charles. It was under fifteen years. It'd been uh, fifty years. It'd been going or something. But we're we'll a gaffer of it. But the, they sent a letter out to all schools saying there's a competition going on. Uh, anything you grow on the school grounds, you can take it in, enter. So we entered as a class. And this is what we took down for them a lot. This is what they grew on site. Uh, we made a crumble out of the room of the med, put into the road, and you can take that out. Anyway, small print. The, the judges there wouldn't believe. That the kids grew this lot mm. on their allotment so that they never give us a, a markings but uh, the little one uh, is it Ailey? I think it's Ailey uh, I put a little truck in a, a little small garden what you're doing a seed tray and had won some of there off Charlie Bob flowered you the mothers wanted to see him he wouldn't even talk to him Ragwood but uh, as soon as it was over, we, we we didn't storm out, but we walked out. 
because uh, they don't believe the kids are says no, Sodom. So uh, somebody else I fell out with. Well, the kids, when they did come down to the allotments, uh, these lot of the people with learning difficulties, they loved them. These loved them and they loved them. All of them loved gardening. It is something different from sat in the classroom, doing the fresh air, using your brain, you're doing it yourself, practical. I can remember school, if I was doing something practical, it's a stick in me noggin. If I was up your nest, because my memory's crap, as you'll really notice, you know. So I'll start again in my exhibiting. Besides exhibiting at our show, this was a Sedgley. They entered there and won. This is a Warleith. I've got them entering there. They won there. And then we moved to Malvern. Because the, they was doing nothing. I, well, I was doing something, but not a lot for school kids. I think in the schedule then, all they got for school kids was a, a sunflower head, a seed head. You know, I said, that's crap. You, you've got to get them doing something. So I, I organised these myself. And basically, uh, Mike Smith, I've, I've got the trugs off him, the old trugs. If the school hadn't got a trug, they could use his. And we, I got my own. We used that in. But uh, he supplied the trugs. I organised the, the gun for most of it. And we got them all organised there. There's the the people that run it. I mean, the RHS, what they do for the kids, they uh, charge for it, and uh, it's crap. National Red Society wouldn't help me out, so I did it on my own. And that was another year, we got a second for the school. And this was the year after, so what I started doing was taking photos of the kids with the stuff on the from the allotment to prove that they'd grown it. That's what I had to do in the end to prove to people. Well, that did well, went all over, and that was the last one. That was the fifth year. But they enjoyed it, loved it, so did the school. I was looking for this photo early on. If you remember Jenny from Rock Dust. Uh, basketball drug dust. This is an edible garden show we, we was doing. Um, this was for school kids as well to get them involved. And we got two schools in here and they enjoyed that. Uh, this is our show. This is the auction on the end of the night. And these two are from the Gordy Club. And because the parents are here, and, uh, we start the auction at 8 o'clock, finish about half 11. It's a hard night. But, uh, it's, it's, I love it. But we use their kids as runners. We have a bids for it. Because everything that's entered stays in. There's no reserves, so at all. And uh, when the kids enter our show, they have to, all, all they've got to put in is uh, one veg, one flower, one fruit. And there's also cakes now. They can pick whatever they want to put in. But we always cook the books so uh, everybody wins. There ain't no losers, kids wise. Eric Pickles, he was um, environmental secretary at the time and I got into him about uh, being schooled but should be on the national curriculum. He says it'll take a couple of years to uh, kick off. I'm still bloody waiting, still on. And uh, got his name in the uh, highlights again at closing allotments. And because of the work we've done on our allotment site, i.e. kids involved, and uh, people really learn difficulties and whatever. We got the Green Flag Award. And basically, it was because of the kids and the old ones. Right, my next talk, this might seem a way off, but if anybody lives, don't forget this is going on uh, YouTube as well, so I've got to advertise me talks. This one ain't till um, Friday 28th of Jan next year. But if anybody lives in Doncaster, me a hook. Raised beds and no dig cultivation. It's only three quid entry, 7 pm start. But I shall advertise them uh, again later on. Quick advertisement for myself, and that's it. Troops. Ah. Hope you have enjoyed that. 
Well done, lovely. Mick. Fantastic once again. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mick. Yeah. Good night, Jerry. Well, I've got hold of you all. Uh, anybody do dahlias? Think they could put a, a bit together for next week about dahlia cuttings? Taking dahlia cuttings. Or think about it. If you can do it and you want me to talk through it, then I'll talk through it. Because I know that there's a few people don't like um, talking through stuff. Right, well, any questions? Any thanks. questions we've been on tonight? I'd just like to say thanks again, Mick, tonight for another great night, and thanks for calling for doing a little bit on Fuchsia, because that's what oh. we asked for last week. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a good lad. Yeah, really good. No Thank problem. You. Thank you. Cheers. Take care, Mick. See you soon. Look after yourself. Cheers, Mick. Thank you, Jerry. Any questions for tonight? <laughs> Is that somebody who misses on the dog? <laughs> Smart dog. <laughs> I thought it was your stomach rumbling, Andy. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's never been a dog, it's a sheep, mm, isn't it? It's like a man. <laughs> <laughs> That's an air cut. <laughs> subs do, Mick. Hey? <laughs> oh, subs do. There's sweet. two more paid in tonight. But uh, that, that's still, people are still paid in. You have to remind us. Mm. Well, it's only a quid a week. And your point it's only is? A quid a week. I mean, some people put in a, a ten or fiver or whatever. But uh, I've had two more going tonight, quid a piece. I'll chuck, I'll chuck one in. Last another four weeks. Mick, you know, uh, you know your um, Blanche Flakes that you yeah. showed that you've um, uh, put your <laughs> damp course through. What what uh, size pots are they in now? Gordon Bennett. You know. No. Uh, I should say three litre, I think, yes. Three litre, yeah. Yeah. You put them seeds in yet, Mick? Now, Steve. No, go find them. Shall I send you some more? Oh, bloody Nora. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, <laughs> Steve, how are you doing? No tomatoes, mate, this year. Aren't you? I'm just Why looking not? for me. Um, Keith's doing um, uh, a little piece next week. I didn't rather mention it earlier on, or did we get cut off, or did I get cut off? When we got cut off, uh, if you remember, Keith uh, gave us a talk last week and he covered his coleus. Remember that? Yeah, he showed at Morgan. Yes, somebody says, How do you take cuttings? So I got in touch with him and he's going to do us a piece next week. Being a, being a good egg. So he's going to know how to take cuttings off colonies. Like cold oil next week. Oh, gladdy that was Andy. You asked me about them. Yeah. Gladys, didn't you? I'll send you the pictures in a couple of days, Mick. Brilliant. Cheers, Keith, mate. No problem. Can, can this be a general general talk on on how to grow uh show colliers Keith. um yeah yeah how to produce a plant that you showed us last week i'll try yeah yeah, yeah. yeah we can uh, we can expand it yeah that'll be interesting Look yeah no problem colin you better expand your greenhouse then oh well yeah Tell you what, Colin, you need a big greenhouse because I bought a bigger. It's not big enough. They never, never are, are they? You never know, are, mate. Always run out of space. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Colin, never. you'll you'll be all right when the pub's open. You go down the pub, and come back, and buy another one on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> they, they keep going over tomorrow because the pub's only fifty yards away. I'm um, going tomorrow. I promise you. I booked it at six o'clock in my local. Oh, yeah. oh, no. <laughs> no doubt about that. Have you looked at the weather forecast? It's not going above six but degrees. Bleeding cold. I'm, look, I'll be sitting down there, it's piddling down with rain. I'm only for an hour, but I'm going to have my first pint legally. Yeah. 
Yeah. It won't it just be a quick couple. But then I've got a meeting. At, I'm going at six. I've got a meeting at half past seven. So I'm going to have a couple. But yeah. Just going to have a couple. You know, it's important. Another important milestone. Well, it's yeah. <laughs> be all the out of date beer tomorrow. Wait a couple of days. <laughs> oh, I don't know. My, unfortunately, my pubs were used it all, so don't worry. One more right. <laughs> Going back to greenhouses, I've got a friend that works at Ryan, and he'll he'll do you a massive discount. So if you want help from Ryan, which is just a road at Doncaster from me, where Mick's going next week, in a few weeks, um, obviously I can get in touch with him and get a cheap greenhouse. Right, how do you spell that? Ryan. R I O N. Just type that in, in your search and it'll come up as a, a greenhouse, but they do quite a lot of different ones. It's a good job I'm not in beer, Steve. I'd have took you up on that. Will I? <laughs> <laughs> You'll be coming up to Doncaster then to see Mick, will you? No, no, that's too far for me, mate. Oh my God! Too cold up there, isn't it? Yeah. No, we're in Midlands. It's your lot that's down south. <laughs> Colin, like you got no room for the greenhouse, have you? Oh, Colin. Oh, I could, I could, I could, um, I could get another one in, but I don't want one. I mentioned the poly tunnel to the missus, but she hasn't spoken to me since. <laughs> <laughs> Or was that five years ago? <laughs> yeah, I'm, you know, my experience, you don't ask, you do it, and then ask then ask afterwards. Do you, isn't it nice? reaction is, yeah. <laughs> it is. I've just looked on that website and everyone's out of stock. Oh, dear. What, on my side? No, on the Ryan side, every greenhouse they do is out of stock. Yeah, because yeah. they're selling them from factories called... Uh, I don't know. Greenhouses in Doncaster. Type that in, it'll come up. Polygram or somewhere. Huh? God, he's fast, him, isn't he, Mick? <laughs> he's, uh, he's after the bargain. Yeah, he's fast until he puts his things up. He hasn't put, put out on his site for a few weeks now. I'm sick <laughs> of seeing you plant peas, Nigel. <laughs> I'm jobbing for week after next. <laughs> That's the <an> intro. <laughs> oh dear. We'll be one up tomorrow night. It's yeah, right. How, how did you angle getting the uh, getting your allotment plot ad adjacent to your back door on the fence? What what happened with that, Colin? The, just as I was coming up to retirement, the bloke who had that lived two doors away from me and he passed away. All right. And and our allotment site had gone through a phase where it's only 21 plots and people was dropping off and nobody was taking up. At one stage, there was only six plots taken. All the rest was covered over by black polythene. So I thought, I'm going to get one of these. And I got a choice of about three. So I thought I'll have the one at the bottom of the gate. And first of all, I, I used to climb over with a ladder, but there was barbed wire like, and it was a... If you'd had a few points, it was a bit risky. <laughs> Understandable, <laughs> really, isn't it? Yeah. So in the end, I cut a, cut a gate in the fence and I walked through. And I think it was about two years on, the chap who was running it packed it in and I'd become secretary and, and just look, look look after it now. Yeah, well, just the job, that is, isn't it? Perfect, isn't it? Andy, yeah. Right, I'm told I'm going downstairs now. So good night, gentlemen and ladies. <laughs> and ladies, <laughs> and yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers, I'll see you next week. You take care. Look after yourself. Bye. 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 Cheers. You know, with the um, with your horse muck that we're getting, does anybody test it before they put it on the garden to make sure it hasn't got any of uh, this uh, insecticide in? Um, the guy who drops our, our horse muck off, Colin, he 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 runs the horses in his back his back garden. It's like with his three football fields. It's massive, yeah. so we know how genuine the manure is. So we're safe using that. Yeah, all right. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 Mick, I, how, Mick, how do you test for antibiotics in horse muck? You 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 got to ask where where. You, 
as um, Lars just said, wherever you get your book from, you've got to ask the owners, you've got to go into it. You know, what do they use, where, you, where, where they get the, the bedding from. Usually, if, um, if there's loads of people going up there for it, then you know it's a good brew. Otherwise, you know, people are saying that's crap, and where to get about, then they, they panic the soul. But uh, as for testing it, that's, that's going to cost, isn't it? Right, I, I started um, just mixing it up, um, crumbling it up, and sowing two or three broad beans in it before I use it. Mm. And, yep. and if they germinate, it and look reasonably healthy. Yeah. But if there's anything wrong, I mean, broad beans will germinate in fairly quickly. Um, so, and, and you'll soon be able to tell if it's going to be healthy or not. So that, okay. I, I, does anybody mm. else do that? Well, does anybody use the 6X uh, chicken manure that you can buy? And I use the, the fibrous stuff. And I've used the pellets and all, but I prefer the like fib fibrous powder stuff. Mm. I used to have the six X down our trading shed. Mm. I used to buy the pellet. That was a good brew. Always a good brew, well. Because I mean, we, we were using manure, but we were getting too much weed. Yeah. And we knocked it on the head, and we tried the manure last year, and it, the six X, and it worked perfect. So yeah. we're doing it again this year. Yeah. Can you get any cow manure? Because I find there's less weeds in that because it goes yeah, through more stomachs. Not yeah. right, my us. The only time I've had uh, weeds once was, um, well, that was when heaven was open, where we could get up there. When they started using hay instead of straw, and yeah. th that's that's a cock up I made. And the bloody crap I used to get th growing through, mm. you know, I'm pulling it up and so that. But I, I clicked on in the end. Well, next time I went up, there's another chap there. What was that, the one at uh, Warren's Hall Farm? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. We went there a couple of times, but I was not impressed, really. Yeah. At the end. Well, you've they've closed it now. Yeah, yeah. We'll get in. Can't you get in for any manure mic at all? No, they got somebody collecting it. Mm. Well, they ain't going to have that much, am they? But I think they've got to skip out the back of someone. And then once that fills up, somebody collects it, and it goes straight to them. Well, that's that big man. Yeah. They cleared it. All that mug that was at the back, they cleared the yeah. lot. Where I think that's now. I think that's now a car park. Because yeah, don't forget, right in the middle, if you'll Google it, right in the middle, I've got the Equestrian Centre. And it's well known. And that's how they make the money for the kids and the horses. Mm. We was just um, an interference. The and I went right into it. Have you got another supply lined up? Yeah, one of the the wenches. Yeah. Who goes up there has got a stable local. And uh needs people to take her muck out of the road. So um yeah. I've got to get the address off Paul. Yeah. What he found her out. We pay twenty five uh, we had twenty five bags delivered for a tenner. Yeah. So, so I think today we even was catching you in your car after that. Bloody oh, eh? that's wonderful that is. Oh, it's good stuff as well. It's all just picked off the grass. Oh, very much the bedding in it half the time. Yeah. Is that local, Andy? Yeah, yeah, local. And so you're out if you want to ever want any. Oh. I'm sure I'll drop it off up there as well. Mm. See you more. Well, a minute. Me. We got goat mug delivered. Yeah, that's good stuff, which, eh? Which we ain't had for two years, so that's coming out of our ears. Plus the rabbit. Oh. What's the ultimate mix? Goat, llama, you know, rabbit. A mixture of everything. Is it? Yeah. That makes life easy, doesn't it? The more mucks you can get, now we get, there's, there's somebody in every muck, which ain't in other mucks. But I'll pack her, in fact, somebody mentioned uh, yesterday about rabbit muck. Can you use it straight? Well, first of all, it says, can I use rabbit muck? It says you can use any muck except cat and dog. Since well, rabbit, somebody's told me it's too strong. Was uh, wanted to put it on straight away. I said no, it doesn't. Mm. I said it, it, it's, it's weak. Bung it on. Same as alpaca and llama. Mm. There, there's no strength in it. You can use it straight away. Plus, don't forget the urine is in the straw. What they use as a bedding. Have you tried to find out what's the difference then between the alpaca and sheep? I could hardly see that there'd be any difference. Then, uh, 
Uh, it's got to be as, the, as, for, as for the horse, Matt, the, um, I've got the, a nephew that's paid £60 a month to take a trailer load away from the stables. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. he, he drops it down the farm. And I'd like to say, that's where I got mine from as well. Yeah. But he just spreads it across the field. Mm. But mm. One, one lot of that they must have got because they they use hay and straw, obviously, and get it from different places. And he only had, as well, I've only had from him, one bad trailer load that had got something in it, right, that um, strangely we, we set my lad's um, raised beds up with it. And it, in the second year, it affected the potatoes in the first year, and the second year it's clear and everything's working okay. Oh. So it only lasted. But then that, that got a lot of sawdust in it, so I think they just got a rogue um, trailer full from somewhere. But yeah, the funny yeah. thing about it, where you was having the runoff as, as sort of liquid horse muck, yeah, I yeah. took that off of my um, muck heap and had absolutely no problem with it whatsoever. Yet when you use the muck itself in a raised bed, it played up. I mean, the sister-in-law had some and it messed up some flowers. And Roland Jr. <coughs> messed up um, his uh, potatoes. So, and it's just a rogue trailer full, like, you know, the rest mm -hmm. of it's been okay. And I've, I've got some there now. That heap that you put up the other week of mine must be three and four years old, some of that. Yeah. And it literally has gone down like compost. Mm. You know. Because originally it was the herbicides I was using, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it, it, it's actually in Grazon. And I can remember the father-in-law using Grazon several years ago. But what it's only ever been done for is spotting stuff. So I can't see, yes, it shouldn't be in there, you could argue. But if you've just gone round and sprayed the odd patch of thistles or nettles or whatever that yellow flower is horses can't eat, yeah. then I can't believe people would spray the whole field with it. You know, so... Mm -hmm. clearly, oh, and, and you're not well, supposed to... Is, is that something like a glyphosate, then? Is it all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there, there is a name for it, a great, great big long name. But, um, it, it, like I say, it was only ever used for spotting. But we never, in them days, never used the manure for gardening like I do today. I mean, it, it's only the last five years that I've got into gardening. So, um, but now, and, and I wonder where you've lost your manure off of that heaven site. Yeah. Is it because <laughs> well, everybody, the government and Uncle Tom Cobbley and all the three uggers are trying to get us to stop using peat? Are these people trying to make an alternative to peat by going round all the uh, stables and getting all the horse muck and everything else ready to do it? Will it be some form of new compost as opposed to peat? Yeah. No, on this site, that they needed the land for the car parking. Yeah, well, they have to dispose of the manure as a certified waste. That's yeah. why, I mean, there's a, a place down at Bow Brickle and they have a big bulk um, container in there where they throw it all in every day and whatever, and it's taken away. Yeah. Because um, it has to be disposed unless it goes to another farm and spread on the land. Yeah. Um, so this, this manure there, the pole, was that big? I mean, it took them three days to clear it. See how big the pole was. What have they done with it? Has some local farmer spread it all over his land like they do with it, with these here uh, mass chicken no. units? No. Or what do they do? Have they, have they you know, they go for the chicken East. places and get chicken oh, no. manure. See Jeffrey. Hi, Hi boys. See, see you, Jeff. See you, Jeffrey. <coughs> Jeffrey. I'll send, you a link. I'll send you a link, Jeff, on Facebook for you. Mick. Thank yes. you. Warren's all sold the manure to a farmer. All of it. Yeah, all a big of it. Dollar. Yeah, oh. they said it all while. That's the farmer. Yeah. Evening, Paul. Evening. Where have you been? What's happened? You'll run out of cider or something tonight. <laughs> no, I have to go to the off license. No. I'm just all the things. Hi, Joe. Hello. <laughs> that company's called Palram Applications Limited. Or just Palram, P A L R A M dot com. Palram dot com. Greenhouse.
Oh, yeah. Alright. Big company. Massive. With the football stadiums and everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell, Colin. You do that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get that on eBay. You get a few fuses in there, Colin. Oh, that'd be good, wouldn't it? With an automatic roof opening. <laughs> oh. <Hey. laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Evening, Paul. Evening, mate. Sorry. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. You? Yeah, not bad. Just ready for a pint. Oh, wow. I thought, I thought Paul was in. He died win the raffle tonight. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> will you? Oh, that's uh, a shame. You should wait, do you think you'll get that wheel going next week or what? <sighs> I thought I'd sorted it out tonight. Want to make a wheel of your own? Yeah, that's a wooden one. I'll nick on a bloody hamster. Yes. The farm at Romsley sells cow muck. Did you know that? Find a bag. Is that Bibby's? That's yeah, the one I... on the way. Yeah. Oh. It's a sloppy... Now it's all like lump. People are asking if he keeps it in bags in the uh, barn. In proper nuggets, mm. proper big block shovelfuls. Like I've been there. For, I've been there for thirty odd years. I might try it. When I had mine, the ones from there, who had the tunnel about the garden, I mucked all the ground, who had the allotment. Mm. Then I got me to do it, and I put some grass down, and you see grass grows so quick. Well, I, I, can't believe, I can't believe you ain't got no cows ran by colleague eight. Had the no farmers round there with cows. It's all hills, don't forget. They're back they of our lot. Build, are they, cow? Nigel. Hello. Back of our allotments. We've got a uh, sheep and cows in the field. You can hear them. Well, well, what's the farmer do with all the the, start, the barn stuff and that? I don't know. I have to go over and find out. It's Beasley's, Beasley's farm, mate. Oh. It's a beef Beasley. unit you want where they have the animals in all the while. You get a beef unit, like out down our way, there's two or three <coughs> beef units, but the local... Um, Bedford Estates at the Abbey here, they have oh, trailer load upon trailer load tipped in there and they use it all over their land. Uh, but what, the other one, one of the smaller ones to, to this fella, um, because he takes the hay off some of our land, he uh, drops two or three trailer full down every time we ask for it. Mm -hmm. And that's real proper stomped up um, manure, like, you know, from Dan Johns. And I've spoken to John about it. And he has no chemicals in his feed at all. So, um, yeah. you know, you're not going to get it. Well, I know we haven't got it because I've got the ground all covered with the uh, manure from there that's been about four or five years old. Um, I've covered everything in it this year, the raised beds and where the flowers are going to grow and everything. So, all being well, you know, well, the proof will be, we should know in September whether it was any good or not. Oh, yeah. Here's a song, Colin. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> I, I need a drink. I'm, uh, I'm yeah. going to have a look what's in the fridge. I'm, I'm going to go be all right tomorrow, Colin. Hey? You can oh. go tomorrow night. People, I'm, I'm going to say to her, I'm going to yeah. leg it. So, you're not Nick's got a bottle of Black yeah. Label. Me too. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. 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 Thank